you know sometimes i feel like the way i talk during these videos i sound so formal i don't know why it's like i don't have a personality when the camera starts hopefully the more i record the more i can just chill hey everybody and welcome back to my channel my name is olivia and today i will be doing my first ever book haul this book haul includes just books that i've accumulated over this month for these past few months. I've got about 20 books here, so I'll try to talk fast and let's get started. So my first two books I got at the library, kind of. They had a card outside and they were just kind of giving away books and then you could put in like a dollar or two of donations. And so the first book that I got was My Absolute Darling by Gabriel Talent. I mentioned this book, I believe, in my mid-year book freakout tag. I said it had like the most beautiful cover so far that I bought. My answer kind of changed, but I still think the cover is pretty beautiful. I don't know too much about this book, but I just remember, I think it's about this girl and she always lived in the woods or by the woods and then she has to go to like school and like first love and all that stuff honestly when i read this it just reminded me of the new dora the explorer movie so that's what i'm kind of going into it thinking about next up we have the royal we by heather cox and jessica morgan i didn't actually know a lot about this book and it's kind of weird because then like the next week or something i saw like post about this on instagram i don't know that much about this one either but it gave me the prince and me vibes if you've seen that movie so i believe it's pretty much just about this girl and she's in college and then she lives down the hall from this prince and then they fall in love and then they have all this royal problems i don't actually know how much I'll like this book and the last one because it looks like an adult book. I'm not positive, don't quote me on that. But in my head, the way I think about adult books are that like they kind of just look like this and like the inside has a really long description. That's just kind of what I look for to determine if something's an adult book or a young adult book. But I might be wrong, this could be a young adult and I just wouldn't know because I didn't look. I don't dislike adult books. But I just feel like I'm not in the place to really understand them fully and appreciate them. The last adult book I read, a lot of it just kind of went over my head in terms of like vocab. And just the fact that I kind of like reading about people my own age more than adults. However, this one's about college people and the other one's about like a little kid. So I don't know what I'm complaining about. These next three books I got from Walmart. And the first one would be... All the Bright Places by Jennifer Neven, Niven, I don't know. I know this is a Netflix film because it says it right here in the cover. I kind of want to watch it, but I want to read this first because I know some people who really like the story and some people who just think it's really weird because I know the characters are a little eccentric. I'm also not sure how it ends. I'm just going to go with my gut feeling and I think it probably is not like happy ending like right off into the sunset kind of thing. Recently I've been trying to broaden my genres which means I'm trying to read something that's not just romance. So I got The Twin by Natasha Preston. So this book is about two twins named Ivy and Iris and I believe that their parents are divorced and each parent got one twin but then the mom died in like an accident and so the twins are all both living with the dad and I believe that one of the twin the twin who lost her mom kind of wants to be her other twin and like take over her life and I believe it's kind of like horry or a thriller kind of thing. I'm not sure if I like that genre or not. I haven't read enough from it. So I'm really excited to read this and I'm excited to see if I like it. The third book that I got from Walmart would be The Forgotten 
Home Child by Genevieve Graham. So I don't really know why I got this. I read the synopsis and it was interesting, but now that I think about it, I don't like historical fiction. I never really have. I have like one non-fiction and it was about history. So maybe you'll like this. I really hope so. I'm not positive, but I believe this book has two timelines, one from 2018 and one from 1936. And they're both about the same person, but at different ages. I kind of forgot what this book was about, but it just says that it's about like this girl named Winifred or Winnie and she goes to this like forgotten child home orphanage and I believe she goes on this journey trying to escape from it and try to reach Canada I believe and then in the 2018 timeline she is about to pass away she's getting old and she's just thinking back on like promises she made so it does sound kind of interesting I'm not positive exactly what made me want to get this but even if I don't like it, I have a friend that really likes this kind of historical stuff. So I suppose it's a win-win either way. Then I recently got this book called I Left the House Today by Cassandra Callen. I got this at Target. Actually, my mom got it, kind of. She thought this book looked funny. And then she was like, you should get it. And I looked at what it was about and I was like, okay. Because you see... I don't really leave the house that often either, so I feel like I could relate to this girl. It is a comic and I try not to look through it because it's easy to just like read the comic when you look through it. But you know, it's 20% off. I was gonna get it. But what really made me want to get this book is that the inside says this book provides encouragement for those who are unsure about leaving the house, which I am always unsure about leaving the house, and the perfect companion for anyone who decides they'd rather stay home after all. So I don't know if this is just going to be fun and lighthearted or if this is going to be impactful, but I'm up for either of those. This just looks really like a fun read. Next up, I have five books from Barnes & Noble. You know, I always say I don't really spend a lot of money. I don't like to spend a lot of money. And then I go to Barnes & Noble and I buy like five books. But these books are awesome, so I don't regret that much. <laughs> so first up, I have Almost American Girl by Robin Ha. And this is about a girl who grew up in South Korea with her single mom. Then their family gets relocated to Alabama because her mom gets married or is getting married. And this is a memoir and about Robin's life and growing up and not really understanding the United States and the culture and the language and just having a hard time fitting in. So I am adopted. I am also from South Korea. So... I was really interested in this book because of that. I was adopted by a white family and so I don't know if I'll really connect with any of the culture things in here. I know I'll understand some hardships but there will also be many that I know I just won't understand. I've also never really moved so I can't connect to that part but this just really intrigued me and I've been wanting to read a lot more about Asian representation with Asian main characters and this is also a comic so it'll be a quick read and also just really fun I hope. I don't really know if I should share this next one but I'm going to. So my mom kind of also got the insight guide to South Korea. I'm not against it because I am interested. I want to read this. I don't know if I ex really will because you know, not really a nonfiction person. This is literally just all about Korea. It talks about different things like places and history and I think just people in general. I don't know if I ever will go to South Korea. I do want to because I'm from there, but I'm also really bad on just long plane rides. But I do believe that someday I will go back. And in the meantime, I'll read up on it. Next up, I got Date Me, Bryson Keller 
by Kevin Van Wy. I feel like you can always just tell when I'm not sure about the author's name because I make like that face. <laughs> so this is just looks really interesting and cute and I've heard a lot of good things about it. I've seen a couple people talk about it already and they really liked it. I just talked about how cute and how funny it is and how it's just lighthearted. I felt like I really needed that. And I've also just been wanting to read up on like LGBTQ books because I've been wanting to diversify my bookshelf in both race and sexuality. And I mean, come on, they just, they look really cute together. Like I know these aren't actual like the characters, but they're so cute. <laughs> These next two are ones that I've already read, and they're good. So, I'll be the one by Lila Lee. I really like this book. I won't say too much about it because I am planning on doing a full review on this. Hopefully, I have lots of ideas about videos, but I'm really bad at like doing them. So the plot of this book is just that there's this girl named Sky, and she is. Well, okay, here's the thing. She calls herself fat in the book. So I might just use that word as a descriptive word, but also in this book, she talks about how fat is not a bad word. And I think that's really something important because like I've always grown up, I'm not the thinnest person and I've always seen fat as being a bad word. But then Skye talks about how it's just a body type and how fat, itself is not a bad word it's really just the intent when you say it so i just really love sky and this book is just really important to me i should probably stop talking so much about this book because i do want to do a full review next up is dear evan hansen i just knew when i saw this i was like i have to get this book I love Dear Evan Hansen the musical, I love the songs, and I do know a lot of people don't like the story, and it's understandable because the story is kind of not the best. This story is about a boy named Evan. He has depression, he has social anxiety, and one day there's this guy named Connor Murphy, and he commits suicide. So Evan was the last person to really interact with Connor and Connor signed his cast and there was also a letter that Evan wrote to himself. He was supposed to write himself a pep talk but then it turned into him just releasing all his emotion and saying about how life just really sucks. And Connor found this letter and Connor kept the letter and when he died they found that note and it was addressed to Dear Evan Hansen and it said from me so they all thought that the letter was from Connor to Evan. So everyone thought that Evan was Connor's best friend. And at first, Evan just really wanted to help out the Murphy family with their grief. He thought that maybe he could tell them about how Connor wasn't such a bad guy, even though he didn't really know him. And I also should probably stop talking because I do want to do a review on this as well. However, I do want this review of this book to be in Spanish because I blogged about it and I wrote in Spanish so might as well speak in Spanish. We'll see how that goes. The next how many books I don't know are from the thrift store because I need to stop spending so much money. First up I got Off the Page by Jody Picoult and Samantha Van Leer. I didn't know that this was the second book in the series. So that's cool. I don't know if I can read this now or not, or if I have to read the first one. I think this is just about this girl and how she wants this boy to be real and then he becomes real from a book. If you read this, tell me down below if I need to get the first one first. Then I got, well, you can't really see it. It doesn't have a dust cover. I got Girl Online by Zoe Su Su oh. Zoe Sug. Recording myself has made me realize how bad I am at speaking, especially with my S's and just 
Oof. So I forget a lot about what this book is about. It doesn't help that the dust jacket isn't on, so I can't really read that synopsis description if it had one. So I know this book was written by Zoe Sugg, or at least the idea, and I used to watch her on YouTube. So I'm intrigued to see if I'll like this book or not. I'm pretty sure it's about this like social media star or something, and that's pretty much all I know. Then I got The Little Paris Bookshop by Nina George. I know it's about this guy who likes books, and I think he goes on a journey, and that's pretty much my extent of knowledge on that book. And then I got Wuthering Heights. This is the SAT score raising classic edition. So that just means it's really big because half of it is like this side is vocab words and explains what they mean. And this side is the like actual book. So hopefully I can raise my ACT score with this. And if not, well, at least maybe I can understand what the book's about because I don't read historical stuff. But I got this book because my friend really likes Wuthering Heights and just classics in general. So I thought maybe I could buddy read this with her. I don't know if it'll actually happen, but I do plan to read this because, I mean, I bought it. And spoiler alert, my bullet journal, my bullet journal theme for August is inspired by Wuthering Heights, or at least the title page is inspired by Wuthering Heights. So hopefully I'll get that out on time. No promises. Then I decided to get Famous Last Words by Katie Allender. This is another thriller, I believe. It's about this girl named Willa and she has strange visions and they've been kind of connected to this murderer or killer that's been in Los Angeles and he reenacts famous movie murder scenes with his victims. So she hopes she can use her visions to stop him or else she might be the next victim. The next book I got was Cut by Patricia McCormick. So I got this book. It's a pretty short book. I know this is a book about cutting and self-harm. I don't know too much about it, but a lot of my friends have read this and they really liked this book and said it was really good. So I'm excited to read this. The next one I got, it's weird, but like I had to get it, which is Pride and Prejudice and Zombies by Jane Austen and Seth Graham Smith. So I had to get this, like I had to. My school did Pride and Prejudice for our play last year. And so now I just feel like I had to get it. I haven't read Pride and Prejudice yet, but I thought maybe I could read this since it's shorter and then see if I liked it. And then maybe I'll read Pride and Prejudice I don't really know if I like books about zombies. I don't think I've ever read a book about zombies. So that will also be a new experience. Next up, I have If I Stay by Gail Foreman. So this is also a movie. I have not seen it yet. I will read this and see if I want to see it. It was kind of sticky. <laughs> I know this is a girl who got an accident and she is in a coma. And I believe she's like conscious and can hear stuff, but she's questioning whether she wants to stay or if she just never wants to wake up. Then I've got I Tell You I Love You, But Then I'd Have to Kill You by Allie Carter. So this just seems interesting. It is about this girl who goes to this spy school, but even though she goes to spy school and knows all these talents, she's never really talked to a boy. I like the idea of spies and talents and just really cool gadgets. And I'm never against a little romance. I know this is a series and I'm really bad with series, but I still want to try this out. Then I also got The Rosie Project by Graham Simpson. Sim I should have looked up how to say these names. So I believe this is about this guy and he does this like project to see if he can find himself like the perfect ideal wife. And then there's this girl, of course, who's like the opposite and he just rules her out. But then of course they fall in love and yeah. And that was the last book. 
thank you guys so much for watching. Tell me down in the comments if you've read any of these books and if you liked them or if you didn't like them. Tell me down in the comments if I did anything that you liked or anything you didn't like or anything I can just improve on. You could also just tell me how your day was. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will forever and always say that twice and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.